On the 2nd of January 1864, a French Catholic missionary arrived on Easter Island. Fascinated by the native people's culture, he wrote many of his findings in a lengthy letter detailing his time spent among them. He noted that many of the natives seemed to possess strange wooden tablets and sticks covered with several sorts of hieroglyphic characters. They seemed to depict animals unknown on the island carved into wood with sharp stones. The islanders appeared to know very little of the meaning behind these symbols and often gave them very little attention, so the missionary decided to never write of them again. This is thought by many to be the first account of the puzzling language of Rongo Rongo. Much like the giant stone statues of Easter Island, this strange writing system is shrouded in mystery. The tablets appear to have been shaped from irregular pieces of wood, some heavily weathered, burned, or otherwise damaged. In the 19th century, these pieces of wood were collected and are now scattered between museums and private collections all across the world, with none of the artifacts actually remaining on Easter Island. Interestingly, the art of writing was not known in any nearby islands, so it's unclear how or where this scripture originated and how it came to be used on Easter Island. The most plausible theory proposed thus far is that the natives were inspired by the writing they encountered in 1770 when the Spanish claimed the island, but many people dispute this. When early European explorers arrived, they found that Easter Island's somewhat isolated ecosystem was already suffering from the effects of overpopulation, limited natural resources, and deforestation. At the time, the island's population was estimated to be between 2,000 and 3,000 inhabitants. But this was slowly depleted over time by European disease, the Peruvian slave trade, and emigration to other islands such as Tahiti. By 1877, the native population had fallen to as low as 111 inhabitants. The Rongo Rongo language was an unfortunate victim of these circumstances, with most of the people who were said to be able to read Rongo Rongo either dead or gone. The colonizers of Easter Island had decided that the strange glyph-based language was way too closely tied to the natives' past and forbade it as a form of communication, forcing the inhabitants to destroy the tablets bearing any Rongo Rongo inscriptions. However, of the ones that survived, the symbols appear to consist of various human, animal, vegetable, and geometric shapes that are between 10 and 15 millimeters in height, with symbols including a fish, palm tree, centipede, caterpillar, squid, various different types of plants, and even some human-like figures, as well as some geometric shapes like a circle or cross. Some of the most interesting glyphs include two kissing birds, a penguin, Mewtwo, a two-headed creature, a guy with a yo-yo, a turtle shell, and my personal favorite, seated man eating. Additionally, the glyphs are written in a pretty unusual writing style called reverse boustrophedon, Whereas in English we read from left to right, top to bottom, the reader of Rongo Rongo begins at the bottom left-hand corner of a tablet, reads a line from left to right, then rotates the tablet 180 degrees to continue on the next line from left to right again. Seems a bit unnecessarily complex. Anyway, one of the first attempts at decipherment began in 1868 when Bishop Florentin Hausen of Tahiti received a gift from recent converts on Easter Island. A long cord of human hair wound around a Rongo Rongo tablet. The bishop immediately recognized the importance of the tablet, so he asked Father Rousseau of Easter Island to collect more artifacts bearing Rongo Rongo inscriptions, and to find any islanders capable of reading them. Though Rousseau was able to acquire a couple additional tablets, he was unable to find an islander willing to translate the texts. But a year later in Tahiti, Bishop Hausen managed to find a laborer from Easter Island, a man called Matoro, who claimed he knew the inscriptions by heart. For 15 days, the bishop kept a record while the boy translated the inscriptions. However, the bishop lost hope when he realized that Matoro was a complete fraud. He had assigned several meanings to the same symbol. It was found out later that Matoro had read various lines, both backwards and forwards, demonstrating a lack of any understanding of the language at all. So that was a complete waste of time. The next major translation attempt was in 1886 by paymaster William Thompson of the ship USS Mohican. Thompson arrived on Easter Island on a journey to collect artifacts for the National Museum in Washington, and became interested in Rongo Rongo after obtaining two extremely rare tablets bearing the strange pictographic inscriptions. In an attempt to find someone who could translate them, he thought of asking some elderly islanders. Due to their age, it made them much more likely to know something about the inscriptions. So Thompson asked a 83-year-old man called Eco for assistance in translation, and the man reluctantly admitted to knowing what the inscriptions of the tablet meant. However, he refused to even touch the tablets, let alone decipher them, because he didn't want to break the orders of the missionaries. Thompson, however, was determined, and thought that the old man may be more forthcoming under the influence of the old truth juice. So after a few drinks provided by Thompson, the islander looked upon the inscriptions once again, and after briefly peering upon the tablets, he suddenly burst into song, chanting about fertility, describing the mating between gods and goddesses. 
Thompson quickly wrote down the words the old man was chanting, but he couldn't seem to match any of Eco's ramblings to any of the Rongo Rongo symbols. He also couldn't find a single islander who was willing to confirm what the old man had said. Despite this, the translation Eco provided has remained one of the most valuable clues in the decipherment of the tablets thus far. In the decades that followed, researchers noticed a correlation between the Rongo Rongo scripts and the Indus script from the Indus Valley Civilization in India. It's claimed that as many as 40 Rongo Rongo symbols had a correlating symbol in the script from India. Here is a sample illustrating the similarities between the scripts. All odd columns belong to the Indus script and all even columns Rongo Rongo. As you can see, the similarities on some are uncanny. Current scholars have downplayed the significance of these similarities for two reasons. First, the Indus script was written 2,000 or more years before the Easter Island tablets. And secondly, Easter Island is on the complete opposite side of the globe from the Indus Valley. Though distance and time are not insurmountable for human beings, this is enough for most scholars to dismiss the theory. One of the first linguists of the modern era to analyse the Rongo Rongo text was a man called Thomas Barthel, who in the 1950s discovered that the system contained 120 basic elements that, when combined, formed 1,500 different signs. He concluded these symbols can represent both objects and ideas, making it much more difficult to decipher because an individual symbol could potentially represent an entire phrase or complex meaning. Barthel, however, was successful in identifying an artifact known as the Mamari Tablet as a lunar calendar. He proposed that it was more precisely an astronomical rule for whether one or two nights should be inserted into the 28-night Rapa Nui month to help keep it in sync with the phases of the moon. The Mamari calendar is currently the only example of Rongo Rongo that is widely accepted as being understood. Though it's still unknown what the text actually says, we do kind of know what it means. An independent linguist named Stephen Fisher has been responsible for some of the most recent research studying the mysterious language. Having studied nearly every surviving artifact bearing Rongo Rongo inscriptions, he took particular interest in the Santiago Staff, a four-foot-long scepter that had originally belonged to an Easter Island chief. He noted that every third symbol on the staff has an additional phallus-like symbol attached to it, leading Fisher to believe that all Rongo Rongo texts have a structure steeped in counts of three, or triads. This was backed up by Eco's fertility chant, as he always named a god first, his goddess mate second, and their offspring third. Fisher announced that he had cracked the code, making him the only person in history to have deciphered the texts. Though in the decades since, this has not been accepted by other researchers, who feel that Fisher overstated the single pattern which formed the basis of his decipherment, and that it has not led to any understanding of any other patterns. Close inspection of the Santiago staff reveals that only 63 of the 113 sequences on the staff fully obey Fisher's triad structure. The truth is, nobody really knows what any of it says. It's pretty much all speculation. But should anyone find a workable translation for Rongo Rongo, the knowledge stored on the remaining tablets might explain the mysterious statues of Easter Island, the sudden appearance of the written language, and the island's history and customs as a whole. However, much like the giant head statues of Easter Island, the mysterious glyph-based language of Rongo Rongo has so far defied all attempts at explanation.